In the Architecture of Reason, Robert Audi presents a comprehensive framework for understanding the rationality of beliefs, desires, actions, and agents. The book is divided into three parts theoretical reason, practical reason, and the rationality of agents, providing a systematic account of how rationality operates across these domains. In Part I, Audi addresses theoretical reason, focusing on the nature and sources of rational belief. He argues that the rationality of beliefs is closely tied to their justification, which is based on well-groundedness. For Audi, justification for a belief arises when it is supported by adequate grounds and these grounds are typically derived from experience. Broadly construed, the four primary sources of justification Audi identifies are perception, introspection, memory, and reason, understood as mental activity. However, he challenges the traditional Cartesian foundationalism, asserting that even foundational beliefs those directly grounded in experience, are defeasible, meaning that they can be overturned by further evidence. Audi emphasizes that justification is not necessarily permanent, and that even beliefs based on strong evidence can be defeated if counter-evidence arises. Audi also rejects the idea that coherence is a primary source of justification, Although he acknowledges that incoherence can undermine justification, in his view, coherence among beliefs often arises because they stem from the same foundational sources, making them interconnected and consistent. Inferentially justified beliefs, or those based on other justified beliefs, must themselves be grounded in beliefs that are already justified. Audi explains that both deductive and inductive reasoning can transmit justification from foundational beliefs to inferential ones. However, like foundational beliefs, inferential beliefs are also defeasible and subject to revision. Audi advocates an internalist approach to justification, arguing that the grounds for justification must be accessible to the agent through reflection or introspection. Even when a belief is false, he suggests that it can still be rational if it is based on strong grounds, such as clear perceptions that the agent has no reason to doubt. This internalist perspective contrasts with externalist views which emphasize external factors in determining justification. In part II, Audi extends his analysis to practical reason, drawing parallels between theoretical and practical rationality. Just as rational beliefs are grounded in experiences, rational actions are grounded in desires. Audi argues that intrinsic desires, those pursued for their own sake, form the foundational elements of practical reason, just as non-inferential beliefs form the basis of theoretical reason. These intrinsic desires are often related to basic human motivations, such as the desire to avoid pain or pursue pleasure. Non-foundational desires, such as the desire for something that satisfies a foundational desire, can be justified by these intrinsic desires, or by beliefs about the object of desire. Audi also explores the relationship between desires and beliefs, arguing that belief is necessary to direct desires into action. For example, a rational action requires the belief that performing the action will help satisfy a desire. He notes that desires, like beliefs, can be rational or irrational depending on whether they are well grounded. Audi applies the concept of defeasibility to desires, 
suggesting that even rational desires can be defeated by new information or experiences. In a particularly intriguing section, Audi discusses altruistic desires and argues that it is rational to want for others the same types of experiences we want for ourselves. He claims that recognizing the similarity between our own desires and those of others can generate altruistic desires. According to Audi, if we value certain experiences for their qualities and acknowledge that others value similar experiences for the same reasons, then it is rational to want others to benefit from those experiences. This argument hinges on the idea that rationality involves integrating cognition and motivation, meaning that our recognition of the similarity between ourselves and others should lead to altruistic desires. Audi also contends that altruism is a rational demand although he acknowledges that caring for others may require more than just recognizing their similarity to ourselves. He argues that caring involves a deeper investment in the well-being of others and that it may not be strictly rationally required to care for someone simply because they are similar to us in certain respects. This leads to an open question about whether caring for others is truly a rational necessity or whether it depends on additional factors beyond rational recognition of similarity. In part III, Audi examines the rationality of persons, introducing the concept of global rationality. A person is globally rational when their beliefs, desires, emotions and actions are individually rational and interconnected. Audi emphasizes that rational persons must have beliefs and desires that align with their experiences and that their emotions should appropriately reflect their beliefs and desires. Moreover, rational persons should act in ways that are guided by their rational beliefs and desires. Importantly, Audi argues that a fully rational person should have some degree of altruistic desire, given their understanding of how others are like them in terms of rationality and motivation. Audi's account of rationality is not without its challenges. For instance, his discussion of altruistic desires raises questions about whether recognizing the similarity between ourselves and others is sufficient to generate caring. While Audi suggests that such recognition can lead to altruistic desires, it is unclear whether this recognition loan can compel us to care about others. Caring, as Audi notes, may require a deeper emotional investment in others and the rationality of caring may depend on more than just cognitive recognition. Another potential issue arises from Audi's treatment of autonomy as a requirement for rationality. He suggests that autonomy involves self-governance and the ability to bring reasons to bear on one's actions. However, his internalist approach allows for the possibility that an agent may be rational, even in cases of manipulation, as long as the agent's beliefs and desires are well grounded in their experience. This raises questions about whether autonomy is truly necessary for rationality, or whether it is possible for an agent to be rational without being fully autonomous. Finally, Audi draws a distinction between subjective and objective rationality, particularly in relation to desires. He suggests that a desire can be subjectively rational if it is well grounded in the agent's beliefs, even if it is objectively irrational due to false beliefs about the object of desire. This distinction highlights the complexity of evaluating rationality.
as it may be possible for an agent to be globally rational, even if some of their beliefs or desires are objectively ill-grounded.